At the beginning of December, we went into the season of Advent, and our theme was prepare. And we heard John the Baptist proclaim, prepare the way, make straight the way of the Lord. There's one coming after me who I'm not even worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. And we were preparing not only for the baby Christ to be born on Christmas morning, but we were also preparing ourselves for the Messiah that is to come at the end of all things. And then on Christmas, we turned our attention to praise, praising this newborn king. And we listened to the angels proclaim to shepherds that Christ was born. And we rejoiced and all of us came together and celebrated that God has come for us all. And now we're at Epiphany, and the word that we're going to be sharing and talking about is proclaim. But the thing about Epiphany is that it's almost as if we're viewing life through like a a rearview mirror in the car, you know? Because everything kind of has that feeling of like, are we still at Christmas? I mean, it still feels like Christmas. Uh, We have these songs that are kind of associated with it. All of our conversations usually begin with, how was your Christmas? How was your New Year's? You know, we kind of get stuck kind of in that little past kind of reflection of it all. But epiphany is really about forward, looking forward. Epiphany is that spiritual aha where all of a sudden you have this momentum to go forward. Epiphany literally means the manifestation of God. God has come for us. And if God has come for us, God has come for all. And what a great lesson we have to show that God comes for all. It's a lesson about the three magi. We don't know if there's three. There's three gifts, but the magi, the wise ones, the wise men, the kings. And this story goes, it's pretty simple. We hear it every year, right? They see the star and it's rising. They know it's for the king of the Jews. And so they go to the place where all the Jewish people gather and they talk to the leaders and they ask them, where, where are we supposed to go? And they unroll the scrolls and they read in the ancient text and it says Bethlehem. And so they go to Bethlehem and they see the star over the house and they enter in and they're filled with joy because they found him and they kneel down and they give them these gifts. And then they're warned in a dream that Herod's up to something. And so they go home by a different road. And we can see that these outsiders are believing in something beyond themselves and that this Christ child has come for them too. It's a beautiful lesson. But at the heart of it, we have really two contending parties. You have the Magi over here, but you also have Herod and all of the temple leaders over here. The Magi, these are the outsiders. They're not from around here. They look different, talk different, act different. They have a different language, different customs, different faith practices. They're astrologers. People think they might even be Zoroastrian priests. And I'm saying that word wrong, I know. We don't know necessarily where they come from. We just know that they are Gentile. They are not Jewish. They are the Gentile of the Gentiles. These are the outsiders of the outsiders. And over here, though, you have Herod and the temple leaders and all these elite people that are gathered together. This is the center of faith. These are the insiders. They have everything. This is the seat of power. It's Herod and all the scribes and the Pharisees and all these people that are gathered together. This is where all of the Jewishness is. These are the insiders. Now, these outsiders over here are also astrologers, and they look for stars to appear, and they listen to that type of thing, and they see the star at its rising. A new light has dawned. Do Herod and the Jewish followers, do they ever see the star? No. Their nose is in the book, right? They're just trying to see. It's in Bethlehem. Over here, these astrologers, not only do they see this star, but they have this faith about them that this is for the king of the Jews. We have to follow it. They're compelled to follow in this uncertain time, an uncertain way. They're going to follow this star to go see this king that they're not even affiliated with. Something about them is just convicted that this is what they're supposed to do. They are are accepting this greater source to guide them. More so, they have a dream later, right? Don't you remember they have this dream to not to go back to Herod? These people are are mystic, if you will, but they they believe these voices, this intuition, this, this prophecy. They believe they're not supposed to do certain things. And so they listen to it. They accept this unknownness about it, but not Herod and the Jewish people. In fact, when they start to hear about that, they close ranks. They bring everybody in, and they say, listen, we got to find out where this kid is. So, hey, wise guys, do you mind just coming back and telling us, you know, when you find them, let us know, because we want to go and pay them homage too, right? They're trying to control. They're trying to lock in. They're trying to lead. They're trying to keep everything together. When the wise ones go into the house, when these magi enter into the home, 
How do they go in? They are overwhelmed with joy. Could you just imagine that scene watching Mary and child Jesus welcoming these strangers that just look so different and they're all joyful and they're bringing gifts? What kind of gifts are they bringing? They're not stocking stuffers, folks, right? (laughs) Gold. This is the gift that you give to a king. Frankincense and myrrh. I mean, back then there was no middle class. You had the upper echelon and you had everything else. This is for the tippy top of those giving them gold and frankincense and myrrh were these sweet-smelling resins that they would use as as an offering at funerals of royalty. Herod and all of his followers over here, they're, they're not excited about it. In fact, our scripture tells us as soon as they find out that the Messiah has been born, he is afraid, he is filled with fear and all of Jerusalem with him. And what do they do? They try to control the situation. We have to regain our power. We have to regain our position, our, our privilege, our places of honor and worship. We have to stay right here. You know what we need to do? And he ends up calling out to massacre all the innocents. And he makes a decree later on to kill anybody under a certain age so that way he can remain in power. When that star is shining in the east, and those magi see it, something new is happening. There's a new reality. There's, there's an earth-shattering thing that's going on. A cosmic universal thing is happening at this moment. A Messiah is born to an unwed teenage mother in a backwater town and little children with dirty feet and smelliness of, 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 of animals come to visit them. And the other people that recognize this are Gentiles, outsiders. And they see this star and they realize something is happening. It's, they don't know what they're going to find. They don't know what's going to happen in front of them. It's very uncertain for them. But for some reason, these Gentile outsiders have a, a sense of faith about them that they follow where it takes them to the Christ child with joy, with I- extravagant gifts. Talk about a response of faith. I don't know about you, but when uncertain times happen, I tend to close ranks. I tend to try to control the situation. If all of a sudden something crazy happens in our world, I'm like, okay, we got to get this together. Everybody, come on. we got And it's a response of fear. I know it is. I do it all the time, especially when uncertain times happen. You know, we as abiding presence are walking into our own uncertain time. For the first time in 43 years, we don't have a, a mortgage to pay. That is a cause for celebration. And we had a great one at 10 o'clock, but it also kind of creates like, what do we do? (laughs) Because we could be like over here, just kind of everybody huddled together. We're just going to kind of keep it tight. Everybody, we're going to keep this position. Just just celebrate this and stay right here where we can respond like the Magi. Faithfully asking questions and wondering and and searching and, and, and going with joy and bringing extravagant gifts And practicing a sense of faith in this uncertain time, not knowing where we're going, but just knowing that God is leading us along the way. That's a hard thing to do. But that is what we've been called to do today by these wonderful magi. Is to go forth into this next year, knowing that God is in front of us, calling us. The light that's shining in the darkness is there for all of us to see. For us to turn toward this greater source, not the earth. Not, not, a, not a mortgage, not even a building, but turn toward this greater source, our God, and let him lead us into the future. Now that is something for us to proclaim. Amen.